New Zealand English is the variant of the English language spoken and written by most English-speaking New Zealanders. Its language code in ISO and Internet standards is an NZ. English is one of New Zealand's three official languages along with New Zealand Sign Language and the Maori language and is the first language of the majority of the population. The English language was established in New Zealand by colonists during the 19th century. It is one of the newest native speaker variant of the English language in existence, a variety which has developed and become distinctive only in the last 150 years. The most distinctive influences on New Zealand English have come from Australian English, English in Southern England, Irish English, Scottish English, the prestige received pronunciation, RP, and Maori. New Zealand English is most similar to Australian English in pronunciation, with some key differences. Dictionaries The first dictionary with entries documenting New Zealand English was probably the Heinemann New Zealand Dictionary, published in 1979. Edited by Harry Orsman (1928–2002), it is a 1,337-page book with information relating to the usage and pronunciation of terms that were widely accepted throughout the English-speaking world and those peculiar to New Zealand. It includes a one-page list of the approximate date of entry into common parlance of the many terms found in New Zealand English, but not elsewhere, such as Haka (1827), Boahai (1920), and Bach. 1905. A second edition was published in 1989 with the cover subtitle, The First Dictionary of New Zealand English and New Zealand Pronunciation. A third edition, edited by Nelson Watty, was published as the Reed Dictionary of New Zealand English by Reed Publishing in 2001. The first dictionary fully dedicated to the New Zealand variety of English was the New Zealand Dictionary, published by Newhouse Publishers in 1994 and edited by Elizabeth and Harry Orsman. A second edition was published in 1995, edited by Elizabeth Orsman. In 1997, Oxford University Press produced the Harry Orsman edited The Dictionary of New Zealand English, a dictionary of New Zealandisms on historical principles, a 981-page book which it claimed was based on over 40 years of research. This research started with Orsman's 1951 thesis and continued with his editing this dictionary. To assist with and maintain this work, the New Zealand Dictionary Centre was founded in 1997. It has published several more dictionaries of New Zealand English, including the New Zealand Oxford Paperback Dictionary, edited by New Zealand lexicographer Tony Diverson in 1998, culminating in the 1,374-page The New Zealand Oxford Dictionary in 2004, by Tony Diverson and Graham Kennedy. A second, revised edition of the New Zealand Oxford Paperback Dictionary was published in 2006, this time using standard lexicographical regional markers to identify the New Zealand content, which were absent from the first edition. Another authoritative work is the Collins English Dictionary first published in 1979 by HarperCollins, which contains an abundance of well-cited New Zealand words and phrases, drawing from the 650 million word Bank of English, a British research facility set up at the University of Birmingham in 1980 and funded by Collins Publishers. Although this is a British dictionary of international English there has always been a credited New Zealand advisor for the New Zealand content, namely Professor Ian Gordon from 1979 until 2002 and Professor Elizabeth Gordon from the University of Canterbury since 2003. New Zealand-specific dictionaries compiled from the Collins English Dictionary include the Collins New Zealand Concise English Dictionary 1982, Collins New Zealand School Dictionary 1999, and Collins New Zealand Paperback Dictionary 2009. Australia's Macquarie Dictionary was first published in 1981, and has since become the authority on Australian English. It has always included an abundance of New Zealand words and phrases additional to the mutually shared words and phrases of both countries. Every edition has retained a New Zealander as advisor for the New Zealand content, the first being Harry Orsman and the most recent being noted New Zealand lexicographer Laurie Bauer. A more light-hearted look at English as spoken in New Zealand, a personal Kiwi Yankee dictionary, was written by the American-born University of Otago psychology lecturer Louis Leland in 1980. This slim volume lists many of the potentially confusing and or misleading terms for Americans visiting or emigrating to New Zealand. 
A second edition was published in 1990. Topic: <laughs> Historical development. Topic: from the 1790s, New Zealand was visited by British, French and American whaling, sealing and trading ships. Their crews traded European goods with the indigenous Maori. The first settlers to New Zealand were mainly from Australia, many of them ex-convicts or escaped convicts. Sailors, explorers and traders from Australia and other parts of Europe also settled. When in 1788 the colony of New South Wales was formed, most of New Zealand was nominally included, but no real legal authority or control was exercised. However, when the New Zealand Company announced in 1839 its plans to establish colonies in New Zealand this and the increased commercial interests of merchants in Sydney and London spurred the British to take stronger action. Captain William Hobson was sent to New Zealand to persuade Maori to cede their sovereignty to the British Crown and on 6 February 1840, Hobson and about 40 Maori chiefs signed the Treaty of Waitangi at Waitangi in the Bay of Islands. From this point onward there was considerable European settlement, primarily from England, Wales, Scotland and Ireland, and to a lesser extent the United States, India, China, and various parts of continental Europe. Some 400,000 settlers came from Britain, of whom 300,000 stayed permanently. Most were young people and 250,000 babies were born. New Zealand ceased to be part of New South Wales and became a British colony on 1 July 1841. Gold discoveries in Otago 1861 and Westland 1865, caused a worldwide gold rush that more than doubled the population from 71,000 in 1859 to 164,000 in 1863. Between 1864 and 1865, under the New Zealand Settlements Act 1863, 13 ships carrying citizens of England, Ireland and South Africa arrived in New Zealand under the Waikato Immigration Scheme. In the 1870s and 1880s, several thousand Chinese men, mostly from Guangdong province, migrated to New Zealand to work on the South Island goldfields. Although the first Chinese migrants had been invited by the Otago provincial government they quickly became a target of hostility from settlers and laws were enacted specifically to discourage them from coming to New Zealand thereafter. The European population of New Zealand grew explosively from fewer than 1,000 in 1831 to 500,000 by 1881. By 1911 the number of European settlers had reached a million. This colourful history of unofficial and official settlement of peoples from all over Europe, Australia, South Africa, and Asia and the intermingling of the people with the indigenous Maori brought about what would eventually evolve into a New Zealand accent and a unique regional English lexicon. A distinct New Zealand variant of the English language has been recognised since at least 1912, when Frank Arthur Swinnerton described it as a carefully modulated murmur. From the beginning of the haphazard Australian and European settlements and latter official British migrations, a new dialect began to form by adopting Maori words to describe the different flora and fauna of New Zealand, for which English did not have words of its own. The New Zealand accent appeared first in towns with mixed populations of immigrants from Australia, England, Ireland, and Scotland. These included the militia towns of the North Island and the gold mining towns of the South Island. In more homogeneous towns such as those in Otago and Southland, settled mainly by people from Scotland, the New Zealand accent took longer to appear, since the latter 20th century New Zealand society has gradually divested itself of its fundamentally British roots and has adopted influences from all over the world, especially in the early 21st century when New Zealand experienced an increase of non-British immigration which has since brought about a more prominent multinational society. The internet, television, movies and popular music have all brought international influences into New Zealand society and the New Zealand lexicon. Americanization of New Zealand society and language has subtly and gradually been taking place since World War II and especially since the 1970s, as has happened also in neighbouring Australia. In February 2018, Clayton Mitchell MP from New Zealand First led a campaign for English to be recognised as an official language in New Zealand. Phonology Not all New Zealanders have the same accent, as the level of cultivation i.e. the closeness to received pronunciation of every speaker's accent differs. 
The phonology in this section is of an educated speaker of New Zealand English, and uses a transcription system designed by Bauer et al. 2007 specifically to faithfully represent the New Zealand accent. It transcribes some of the vowels differently, whereas the approximant, r, is transcribed with the symbol even in phonemic transcription. Vocabulary <inaudible> 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 There are a number of dialectal words and phrases used in New Zealand English. These are mostly informal terms that are more common in casual speech. A considerable number of loanwords have also been taken from the Maori language as well as from Australian English. See the separate section below. New Zealand adopted decimal currency in 1967 and the metric system in 1974. Despite this, several imperial measures are still widely encountered and usually understood, such as feet and inches for a person's height, pounds and ounces for an infant's birth weight, and in colloquial terms such as referring to drinks in pints. In the food manufacturing industry in New Zealand both metric and non-metric systems of weight are used and usually understood owing to raw food products being imported from both metric and non-metric countries. However per the December 1976 Weights and Measures Amendment Act, all foodstuffs must be retailed using the metric system. In general, the knowledge of non-metric units is lessening. The word spud for potato, now common throughout the English-speaking world, originated in New Zealand English, as with Australian English, but in contrast to most other forms of the language, some speakers of New Zealand English use both the terms bath and bathe as verbs, with bath used as a transitive verb e.g. I will bath the dog, and bathe used predominantly, but not exclusively, as an intransitive verb e.g. Did you bathe? Both the words amongst and among are used, as in British English. The same is true for two other pairs, whilst and while and amidst and amid. Topic. Australian English influences Topic. Many New Zealand English terms have their origins in Australia. Some Australian terms present in NZE include bush lost or bewildered, chunder to vomit, dinkum genuine or real, drongo a foolish or stupid person, fossic to search, jumbuck sheep from Australian pigeon, larrikin mischievous person, makas 21st century slang for McDonald's food, mai mai a duck shooter's hide, originally a makeshift shelter from Aboriginal mia mia, paddock field or meadow, palm or palmy an Englishman, skite verb to boast, station for a very large farm, wowser non drinker of alcohol, or killjoy, and ute pickup truck. Topic. American English influences Topic. Advancing from its British and Australian English origins, New Zealand English has developed to include many Americanisms and American vocabulary in preference over British terms as well as directly borrowed American vocabulary. Some examples of American words used instead of British words in New Zealand English are bobby pin for British hairpin, muffler for the British silencer, truck for the British lorry, station wagon for the British estate car, stove over cooker, creek over brook, hope chest over bottom drawer, eggplant instead of aubergine, hardware store instead of ironmonger, median strip for central reservation, stroller for pushchair, push up for press up, potato chip instead of potato crisp, license plate for registration plate, cell phone or cell for British. British and Australian mobile phone and mobile, an ice block instead of British ice lolly or Australian icy pole. Directly borrowed American vocabulary include the boonies, bucks, dollars, bushwhack, fell timber, butt, replacing British, Australian ass, although ass can still be used, ding, dent, dude, duplex, faggot, and fag, interchangeable with the British poof and poofter, figure, to think or conclude, consider, hightail it, homeboy, hooker, lagoon, lube, oil change, man, in place of mate or bro in direct address, mate major to study or qualify in a subject, to be over some situation be fed up, rig large truck, sheltered workshop workplace for disabled persons, spat a small argument, subdivision, and tavern. Topic. New Zealandisms Topic. In addition to word and phrase borrowings from Australian, British and American English, New Zealand has its own unique words and phrases derived entirely in New Zealand. Not considering slang, some of these New Zealandisms are and that phrase a substitution for unnamed others, activity i.e., things, e.g., we had a beer with Daryl and that. 
I picked up the tools and that. Aussie noun Australia. This extension of the term to mean the country is unique to New Zealand. In Australia and internationally, Aussie means Australian person or thing, as opposed to Australia the country. The normal adjectival usage is also used in New Zealand. Big huge adj large object. Big huge building. Extensive. Big huge mess. Glaring. Big huge mistake. Choice, interge, one word rejoinder expressing satisfaction. Cour, interge, many uses, the most common being a form of greeting, or a contraction of cheers, most commonly heard in cour, bro. It is also used as an alternative to good on you. Dairy, noun, corner shop, convenience store. Dunny, noun, toilet. Fangit, phrase, to go fast. Gib board, Gibraltar board noun, the common NZ term for drywall, plasterboard interior wall lining a genericized trademark, Gib is a trademark of Winstone Wallboards Limited good as gold phrase all as well found in other forms of English as well handle noun the pint actually 425 to 500 milliliters glass of beer with a handle, as sold in pubs hard out, hard, used to show agreement, or used to show emphasis, intensity. Examples, agreement, yeah hard, hard out. He was running hard out, heaps, adjective, adverb, abundant, plenty, plentifully. Examples, there are heaps of cops surrounding the house. I love you heaps, give it heaps, give it your best effort, hokey pokey, noun, the New Zealand term for honeycomb toffee, also a flavor of ice cream consisting of plain vanilla ice cream with small, solid lumps of honeycomb toffee, jandals, noun, the NZ term for flip-flops. Originally a trademark name derived from Japanese sandals. Kiwi adj, not only does Kiwi mean a New Zealand person, but it is sometimes used to replace the word New Zealand in NZ businesses or titles, such as KiwiRail and KiwiBank or New Zealand related nouns, e.g. Kiwiism. It is also used to address something that is particularly related to New Zealand, e.g. That house is pretty Kiwi luncheon sausage noun Devon sausage also called Fritz or Belgium in some parts of New Zealand metal road noun a dirt road overlaid with gravel to assist drainage and keep dust down, typically found in rural settings munted adj slang a destroyed, trashed, broken, b of a person, weird or odd polony noun a small cocktail sausage, about 5 cm in long, dyed red and made of mixed processed meats. Usually served and eaten with toothpicks. Polony has other meanings in Australia, South Africa and the UK pooped adj, tired, exhausted, found in other forms of English as well puckerood adj, broken, busted, wrecked. From Maori pakaru, to shatter ranch slider, ranch slider, noun the universal NZ term for a sliding door, usually of aluminium frame and containing glass panels a genericized trademark, ranch slider is a registered trademark of Fletcher window and door systems, rock up verb to criticize, confront or hurry along rattle your dags, phrase hurry up. Dags are feces stuck to the wool of a sheep, which rattle if dry rough as guts phrase of machinery, not working properly, of behaviour uncouth or unacceptable this also in UK scroggin, a nutritious snack taken along on hikes by trampers skull verb to drink a glass or handle see above of beer in one go she'll be right phrase it will be fine shingle noun gravel. A shingle road is an unsealed road shot acknowledgement or interge thank you to express joy, give praise, well done, stoked, ADV, very pleased, delighted, sweet as, interge, cool, awesome, tar seal road, noun, chip seal road, tiki tour, noun, a guided tour, exploration, a meandering route taken in order to waste time, togs, noun, informal term for swimsuit, either gender, Townhouse, noun, a small self-contained, free-standing house with little or no backyard, often with a shared driveway with neighboring houses. The NZ meaning is unique and differs from the American, Asian, Australian and European meaning of townhouse typically terraced houses as well as the older UK meaning city houses of nobility. Tramping, noun, tramp, verb, bushwalking, hiking. Usage is exclusive to New Zealand. Tucker, noun, food. Up the Boahai, up the Puhoi River, in the Wap Waps, to be lost or stranded, of unknown whereabouts or when unwilling to divulge whereabouts. In the outback, or in the boondocks. We adjective one a short time, a little bit, as in my chicken was a wee bit overcooked. Two small, little, as in he was a wee boy. 
This is directly from Scottish English and is in common formal use throughout New Zealand whereas in other English-speaking countries, apart from Scotland and Northern Ireland, this usage is uncommon or used only informally. It is not part of Australian English, for example. Often used redundantly e.g. It was a little wee house. Whiteware, major kitchen appliances white goods in UK Topic. Differences from Australian English Topic. Many of these relate to words used to refer to common items, often based on which major brands become eponyms. Topic. Usage Topic. Some New Zealanders will often reply to a question with a statement spoken with a rising intonation at the end. This often has the effect of making their statement sound like another question. There is enough awareness of this that it is seen in exaggerated form in comedy parody of New Zealanders, such as in the classic 1970s comedy character Lin of Tawa. This rising intonation can also be heard at the end of statements, which are not in response to a question but to which the speaker wishes to add emphasis. High rising terminals are also heard in Australia. In informal speech, some New Zealanders use the third person feminine she in place of the third person neuter it as the subject of a sentence, especially when the subject is the first word of the sentence. The most common use of this is in the phrase, she'll be right, meaning either, it will be okay, or, it is close enough to what is required. Similar to Australian English are uses such as, she was great car, or, She's a real beauty, this object. Another specific New Zealand usage is the way in which New Zealanders refer to the country's two main islands. They are always except on maps, referred to as the North Island and the South Island. And because of their size, New Zealanders tend to think of these two islands as being places, rather than pieces of land, so the preposition in, rather than on, is usually used, for example, My mother lives in the North Island. Christ Church is in the South Island. This is true only for the two main islands. For smaller islands, the usual preposition, on, is used, for example, on Stewart Island, the third largest, or on Waiheke Island, the third most populous. <laughs> Maori influence Topic. Many local everyday words have been borrowed from the Maori language, including words for local flora, fauna, place names and the natural environment. The dominant influence of Maori on New Zealand English is lexical. A 1999 estimate based on the Wellington Corpora of Written and Spoken New Zealand English put the proportion of words of Maori origin at approximately 0.6%, mostly place and personal names. The everyday use of Maori words, usually colloquial, occurs most prominently among youth, young adults, and Maori populations. Examples include words like kia ora, hello, now my, welcome, or kai, food, which almost all New Zealanders know. Maori is ever-present and has a significant conceptual influence in the legislature, government, and community agencies e.g. health and education, where legislation requires that proceedings and documents be translated into Maori under certain circumstances, and when requested. Political discussion and analysis of issues of sovereignty, environmental management, health, and social well-being thus rely on Maori at least in part. Maori as a spoken language is particularly important wherever community consultation occurs. Dialects and accents Recognizable regional variations are slight, with the exception of Southland and the southern part of neighboring Otago, where the Southland burr is heard. This southern area formed a traditional repository of immigration from Scotland see Dunedin. Several words and phrases common in Scots or Scottish English persist in this area, examples include the use of we to mean small, and phrases such as to do the messages meaning to go shopping. Other Southland features that have been identified and which may also relate to early Scottish settlement are the use of the trap in a set of bath words dance, castle, which is also found in some Australia English regions, and in the maintenance of the tilde, with distinction e.g. which and which are not homophonous for such speakers. 
Recent research 2012 suggests that postvocalic r is not restricted to Southland, but is found also in the central North Island where there may be a Pacifica influence, but also a possible influence from modern New Zealand hip hop music, which has been shown to have high levels of non prevocalic r. After the nurse vowel, Taranaki has been said to have a minor regional accent, possibly due to the high number of immigrants from the southwest of England. However, this is becoming less pronounced, some Maori have an accent distinct from the general New Zealand accent, and also tend to include Maori words more frequently. Comedian Billy T. James and the Brotown TV program were notable for featuring exaggerated versions of this. Linguists recognize this as Maori English, and describe it as strongly influenced by syllable-timed Maori speech patterns. Linguists count Pakeha English as the other main accent, and note that it is beginning to adopt similar rhythms, distinguishing it from other stress-timed English accents. Topic. Spelling Topic. Where there is a difference between British and US spelling such as cancelling, cancelling and jewellery, jewellery, the British spelling of double L is universally used. The British use of single L is also universally used in words such as enroll. New Zealanders use tires, not tires, except for trademarks such as Cooper tires. The Commonwealth spelling of curb is used over US curb. New Zealand spelling of re-words such as centre, mitre, leader, and theatre have always officially followed the British spelling as opposed to American centre, mitre, leader, and theatre, although in practice American spellings are often used such as in real estate listings, buy and sell websites such as TradeMe, Autotrader, and others. Words with the CE suffix such as defence, and pretense are usually spelt with CE as opposed to the American defence, and pretense. With our words like color, color or behavior, behavior the spelling of R is always used unless a trademark, such as color steel or the color run, etc. Foreign official awards such as the FBI Medal of Valor always retain their U.S. spelling in New Zealand texts. Additionally the online version of the New Zealand Herald newspaper republishes articles with U.S. spelling when the original article is written with U.S. spelling, such as articles from the Associated Press. Since the advent of word processors with spell checkers, in modern assignment writing in New Zealand universities the rule is to use either 100% British spelling or 100% American spelling, the emphasis being consistency. For words ending in e meant, the e is always included. New Zealand English retains the distinctions between program, computer heuristic, and program, schedule, broadcast show, disc information storage device and disk flat circular object and analog as in analog stick and analog all other senses as found in british and often in australian english it is usual to form past tenses and past participles of certain verbs with t and not ed in new zealand english for example learn becomes learnt spoil becomes spoilt burn becomes burnt dream becomes dreamt dempt and lean becomes lent lent these verb forms are pronounced with a final unvoiced t sound, meaning spoilt is pronounced, spolt, not spoiled. This contrasts with American English, where ed is far more common and is pronounced d, e.g. dwelled, dwelled, is an American form of dwelt, dwelt. Learned, the adjective meaning wise, is universally spelt thus and pronounced as two syllables, ln. The past tenses and past participles of earn and boil are earned and boiled respectively, though they may be pronounced ending with a t sound. Words with the digraphs a and o in British English are usually spelt as such in New Zealand English e.g. feces not feces rather than with just e as with American English. There are some exceptions where certain words are becoming universally spelt with e such as encyclopedia, chameleon, hyena, and homeopathy which are now spelt encyclopedia, chameleon, hyena, and homeopathy respectively. Coincidentally, this is also occurring in British English in these cases too. In hyperbolic statements, the spellings of ton and tons are commonly used e.g. I have tons of friends and I feel tons better, despite the metric system with its ton having been introduced in the 1970s. In words that may be spelt with either an i's or an i's suffix such as organize, organize New Zealand English, like Australian English, mainly prefers i's. This contrasts with American English, where i's is generally preferred, and British English, where i's is also generally preferred but by some, including the Oxford Dictionary, i's is preferred. In New Zealand it is not wrong to use either spelling. 
New Zealand favours fjord over fjord, unlike most other English-speaking countries. The fjord spelling was the normal one in English until the early 1920s, and is preserved in many place names worldwide. In New Zealand it is used in Fiordland, a rugged region in the southwest. When spelling words borrowed from Maori, New Zealand English can either spell them with macrons or without e.g. Maori and Maori are both accepted spellings. In informal writing, macrons are not usually kept. New Zealand always uses jail over British and Australian jail. Gram, the unit of mass, is commonly spelt as such and not gram, which is somewhat found in British English. The same holds true for the words derivates e.g. kilogram is more common than kilogram. All abbreviations of words where the last letter of the abbreviation corresponds to the last letter of the full-length word are abbreviated without a full stop in New Zealand English. Thus the abbreviation of doctor is doctor and the abbreviation of mister as mister do not have full stops after them, as opposed to doctor and mister in American English. Initialisms and acronyms such as USA and NASA or NASA are also abbreviated without full stops in New Zealand English. This practice has been in place in New Zealand since the late 1970s. Topic see also topic Culture of New Zealand New Zealand Humor Regional Accents of English topic References topic topic Bibliography topic topic Further reading topic topic External links topic New Zealand Slang Origins of New Zealand English The Origins of New Zealand English Project at the University of Canterbury New Zealand Dictionary Centre New Zealand English in the 21st Century Kiwi Words and Phrases New Zealand The Story of New Zealand English English, Maori, and Maori English in New Zealand The New Zealand Oxford Dictionary The Ultimate Traveler's Guide to New Zealand Slang